couldn't be happier with how our field trial greens are growing in our garden beds filled with homemade compost and worm castings. Whether in the control group, the biochar group, or the rock dust group, the kale and collards are thriving. The fact that all plants are doing well, with or without additional amendments, gives me more confidence that the foundation of compost and castings is a good one to build a garden on. But the field trials aren't about our homemade compost and castings. They're about trying to determine if the addition of rock dust or biochar will provide benefits beyond those provided by the compost and castings. Will biochar and rock dust produce greater yields? Will veggies grown in rock dust taste better than those grown without? And will crops grown in rock dust have a higher bricks reading? Over the course of the trials, I hope to address all of these questions, not only for the kale and collards, but also for the tomatoes, beets, and carrots that are planted in the trial beds. But today I thought I'd share our first harvest of field trial greens and also make some casual observations about how the plants are doing. I say casual observations because they're not based on measurements and could be affected by my personal biases. With that in mind, let's first take a look at the collard greens. All of the collards look great, but the rock dust plants appear to have larger leaves than the others. Also, their color seems more green and uniform than the control and biochar groups. The biochar collards, though almost as large, have some discolored leaves and don't appear quite as robust. The control collards, on the other hand, have better color than the biochar plants, but are a little smaller. As with the collards, all of the kale plants look great. Unlike the collards, however, the largest kale plants appear to be in the biochar group and the control kale might be just a little larger than those in the rock dust group. All of the plants have great color, and I didn't notice any difference in color between groups. So based on my casual observations, it looks like the rock dust collards and the biochar kale might be the early favorites for highest yield. But of course the real test will come after I've weighed all of the field trial crops harvested over the course of the entire growing season. To get that process started, I picked the first of our field trial kale and collard greens. To keep everything straight, I had separate bags for each group. I harvested as I normally would, picking the lower leaves first. I also picked leaves that had gotten so large they were shading out other plants. When finished, I recorded the weight of each plant type in each group. I'll continue to do this until the end of the growing season, at which point we'll have a much better idea if the addition of biochar or rock dust had an impact on yield. Other than continuing to weigh the field trial harvest, the next step for the kale and collards is to do the blindfolded taste test and bricks test. I should do this soon because these greens are really at their peak right now. So I've got a lot of weighing, tasting, and bricks testing ahead of me. But at the end of the season, I hope to know if the addition of rock dust and biochar helps strengthen the foundation of compost and castings that we've relied on for years. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.